لا إله إلا الله بها قد نادى رسل الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين واجعلنا من التوابين واجعلنا من المتطهرين واجعلنا من الصابرين واجعلنا من المحتسبين واجعلنا من القانتين اللهم بارك لنا في رجب وشعبان وبلغنا رمضان يا رحيم يا رحمن يا حنان يا منان يا بديع السماوات والأرض يا ذا الجلال والإكرام Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this beautiful day of Friday and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with yaqeen with the firm belief, certainty in his word, in his promise and also in rewards for those who are patient, for those who are persevering, for those who are waiting, for those who are putting their trust in Him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our previous sins. And we seize the opportunity of this blessed month of Shaban as we prepare for Ramadan to make tawbah, repentance. As we said last week, our Prophet وسلم, himself, in spite of his status and maqam, he would ask Allah forgiveness and make repentance all the time. And it is time now to reflect and ponder and make tawbah. And every Friday we ask Allah forgiveness, we ask Allah to accept our repentance, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings, but more importantly for his light so we can see better what is right and do it and see better what is wrong and avoid it. My dear brothers and sisters, Yes, we live in odd times and, um, you know, uh, weird and strange moments, unexpected. Who would have expected that the Imam would stand on Jumu'ah with a couple of people and addressing many people online and that thing burning you for not being able to go to the masjid? as a youth, and I probably mentioned it in previous lectures or online webinars, this, this youth who told me about his friend, you know, who died, and he was like so much worried that he never been in the mosque except for some nikah or funeral. And he said, you know what, we were busy with life, now my best friend died, and he never get chance to go to the masjid and I never took the masjid seriously you know what I say to many of those youth and many people maybe who never frequented the masjid never had the masjid or the house of Allah in their mind it's okay use this opportunity now and make intention you know there is a beautiful thing in Islam which we were taught and this is the thing is very peculiar to Islam as a religion as we read in the very authentic hadith reported by Bukhari Muslim, Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet وسلم, reported that Rasulullah reported in this hadith Qudsi, and he said, Inna Allah katab al-hasanati was sayyat thumma bayyana thalik. Allah has written for us rewards for good deeds, and sayyat, of course, markers of bad deeds in our records. 
And then he explained how Allah records our deeds. So we have four options. And in these four options, three options were winning, and one option is loss. So he said, if a person, so if a person makes intention to do something good and he doesn't do it, he gets a good deed. Allah gives him full reward for a good deed. For instance, I intend to go uh, do some good deed. I never managed. I was prevented. There were hindrances. Um, maybe uh, time didn't allow. Maybe I went and I was sent back. I still get the reward because it was beyond my capacity, out of my will. وَإِذَا هَمَّ الْعَبْدُ بِحَسْنَةٍ فَعَمِلَهَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِهَا عَشْرَ حَسَنَاتٍ إِلَى سَبْعِمِئَةِ ضِعْفٍ إِلَى أَضْعَافٍ كَثِيرًا And if you intend to do something good and you do it, Allah writes it ten times, as if you did it ten times, or even seven hundred times, or even multiplied. And then he says, وَإِذَا هَمَّ الْعَبْدُ if a person intends to do something bad and he does not do it Allah will write for him a good deed because he intended to do bad the fact that he prevented not himself and was not able to do it or did not do it let's give a benefit of doubt he still get a good deed فَإِذَا هَمَّ بِهَا فَعَمِلَهَا كَتْبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ سَيِّئَةً وَاحِدَةً But if he intends to do something bad and he does it, it's written one bad deed, not ten. As Imam al-Nawi says, فَانْظُرْ إِلَىٰ عَظِيمِ لُطْفِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَ بِنَا Imam al-Nawi commenting on this hadith is saying, look how gracious and generous and just waiting for us to do good things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I don't want us to be in despair. This is a very dark cloud. Um, you will be surprised that there are people right now I'm in communication with. A couple of them are online watching and they have the coronavirus. I am in touch every day with families who have one of their loved one in, either in the hospital or at home in isolation. So it's part of our reality. Here is what I say. There's nothing I can say except the verses that you already know. Help yourselves with two things. Sabr, patience. Wassalah, salat. And when we say salah, as salah means fard salat and nafil salat. Fard meaning fajr, dhuhr, asr, maghrib, and isha. I'm saying, brothers and sisters, those who haven't been consistent with their salat, this is the time, this is the time to join the 75% of the, the ones mentioned in the hadith. Do your best and start doing your salat. You never know. You never know who's going to go and who's going to stay back. Not to make it doom and gloom and cloudy. This is a disease that's going to go. The Spanish flu back in 1918. Please, I've watched a lot of documentaries, but there is one so good. It tells you how it started from Kansas City, you know, and how it spread and went back to the United States. It's going back, went around the world. It's so terrible. When I was watching that 40 minutes documentary, you can find it on YouTube, about 1980 pandemic and how people live the conditions and how it's so bad. We have a way, way, way better world and better facilities and better medicine and treatment. 
Just think of that, how people managed. And for your information, there has, and watch the tense I'm using, there has always been epidemics. In 2009, there was a nasty one, same like the Spanish flu, which was the swine flu. And the Spanish flu is a swine flu, by the way. And uh, these very animals Allah forbade us to eat. Subhanallah, they caused these things. So the swine flu caused the 1918 epidemic. Pandemic, it was a plague. And the 2009, there was one. But social media was there, but not as strong. And they managed to control it. But this time, too much fear, unnecessary fear caused by people themselves in their behavior. We just need to stay home and relax and be patient. This is the problem. We're a generation, and I said this many times. We're growing a generation does not know two things, patience and gratitude. Now it has been, as I said in the test, there has been wars. This is an actual war. Just imagine this country or any country in world war. Where would people be? In the streets or their home? We are fighting a hidden invisible enemy. I mean, Hollywood tried to make movies and this. Sometimes they, almost the scenario is like our scenario today. But we need to stay home and have patience. People don't have patience anymore. They want things now and right now. And this is what Islam teaches that we're heading to the month of patience, Shahru Sabr, Shahru Ramadan. We need to learn to be patient. What is patience? It's the ability to wait. Patience is the ability to wait in spite of the time. Meaning you don't feel the pressure of time. When are we going to go out? Oh, this is too long. Well, they told us two weeks. Now they said two weeks. Probably after the two weeks finish, they will tell us another two weeks. Because if they tell us three months, everybody will be scared. So the reality is we're going to have to wait. And we may not pray jama'ah as usual Ramadan. I hope we will have at least the last 10 nights. I hope, but it, we don't know. So we need to communicate online, keep the spirit, and inshallah, in this process, we value many things. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Help yourself. There is nothing comforting, nothing which will keep your sanity except two things. Patience. You know, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, sabr miftah al-faraj. Patience is the key to relief. And this is very important. And I'll sidetrack here a little bit. There is a high number, and this is what we're dealing with in the office. Very busy time dealing with a people having anxiety. People having anxiety. And I was surprised. I thought probably there will be a lot of youth. Yes, there is a significant number. But anxiety hitting people of my age and older. Anxiety is thinking in the future. Depression is thinking in the past. And Allah is telling us, don't worry about the past. And don't worry about the future. Learn from the past and plan for the future. So the remedy for anxiety is planning. The remedy for depression is learning. And I know it's hard and it's easily said than done. However, we mask our vision with the past and with the fear of the future. I repeat, we become blind if we think in the past, when we become trapped in the past. Everything we see around us is based on past experience. And this is why we lose trust, we lose confidence, we lose many things because everything is through the past. The past has passed. What should I do with the past? You could forget it, but you do not forget the lessons from the past. And we human beings in general, we never learn. We know there were pandemics and there were many, many, many wars in the world. We forgot the history. We forgot we can ask our grandparents about the 1950s. And we can ask our parents and we can ask people about recessions and depressions in the past. But we forgot because we don't read history. 
in the Quran as Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran said لَقَدْ كَرَ لَكُمْ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ in the stories of the past including the stories of the prophets there are many lessons for you to make you patient and steadfast but also plan in the future so the past has to be taken only for lessons how about the future anxiety I don't know what's going to happen with the business the mortgage the rent the job Habibi what if you die tomorrow you will not enjoy anything when a person dies does not worry about anything except how to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything is gone so we need to prepare for the future without anxiety I know they give you medicine they do therapies all that is helping but believe me patience and Iman and Iman and faith in Allah the one in control can make everything that is impossible possible and we have to have faith and these are the moments to strengthen our faith not to increase our anxiety or depression and be in the present right now I am responsible about now my actions my thoughts and thoughts are very important and that's why I say to our youth read learn this is an opportunity like no other opportunity learn if it's not Hifd al Quran, if you're not into memorizing, read, take notes. This is the time to dig out a lot of wealth and gems. You know, people when they used to study, when they used to send us for examination in our studies back in the days, we used to take one one month to six weeks just to memorize and study, especially when you do Islamic studies or you do anthropology or any of these things where you have to have a lot of information, you know, historical fa facts and all of that. We used to just take six weeks just to study. We don't do nothing, just study. Some of us stay in their rooms, some of us go to the park. It depends on the weather and the conditions and we just study. So think this time is a blessing for us to learn something, maybe learn a skill. There are some tutorials on the internet to make you skillful. But you have to be patient. So, وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ In addition to patience, salah. And we spoke a lot, a lot about salat. Salat is about connecting with the source of power and the source of light. Because that light is needed. That's when another hadith is said, was sabru diya. Sabru also opens up for light. And this is why these two are very important salat and sabr. Was ta'inu bi sabri was salah. Wa innaha la kabira tun illa ala al khashi'in. Allah speaks about salat as being a very heavy thing, except for those who are focused. Who are they? الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Those who know that they will face, meet Allah. Meaning, you put in your mind, imagine you have a court case, or you imagine you have an uh, interview for a job, or an examination. All your mind is worried about that moment you meet your examiner. The one who will ask you. Well, Allah says the people who do salat, they are ready to go. They are so focused that they will meet Allah on the day of judgment. That focus is there and it helps them to endure all pains because in their mind the bigger is yet to come. The bigger problem is how do I answer for the injustices I have committed in my life. And the words that cut sharper than a, a dagger or a knife into the flesh of people which Allah described gossip and, 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 and backbiting as actually cutting into your own brother's flesh and eating it raw while your brother has already died. Can you believe Allah giving us these descriptions that you should be focused and that will take care of your depression and anxiety? We go back again to the ayah. Inna Allah sabri. Inna Allah. Allah truly, I confirm to you, I guarantee you that Allah is with those who are persevering, those who are patient. And do not say, And as for those who are meant to die, 
for the sake of Allah. And by the way, if somebody, and I'm saying this to the families, may Allah give you patience, but if your loved one dies because of this disease plague, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if a person has faith in Allah and patiently and dies because of this, he is a shaheed, he is a martyr. It is a war against an invisible enemy. And all those who die while having faith in Allah, they are considered martyrs. The person who dies because of virus, ta'un, plague, person who drowns, person who's caught in fire and dies, is a martyr. And this is very important to understand the status and rank of these people. So at the end of the day, you're not losing. Even if you die, what do, what's the worst thing? Nothing. You're actually a martyr. We don't wish nobody to die because of this, but already in this country to this day, last time I checked, 176 people died, and people are dying every day. We have already hit 53,000 people last time I checked this early this morning. And so these 50,000 people died around the world and God knows how many more will die. So what do we say? We say, inna lillahi wa inna That's why Allah says right after that, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ And we will surely try you. So there is no way out of it. Maybe the last 20, 34 years, not much happened. You know, a little bit trials here and there. But Allah said in everyone's lifetime, there will be trial. Such as what? We will test you with fear. A lot of people are in fear now. And starvation. We never try. Honestly, how many of us have really experienced starvation? I'm not talking about like eating every two hours saying I'm starving. I'm talking about the real starvation where food you don't see it for weeks or months. And less money. Loss. Maybe business loss. Stock market is crashing. God knows. Walanfusi. What thamarat? A loss of life. A loss of goodies. Thamarat could be all the things that really come in handy and we take them for granted. Fruits and, and snacks and things that we just open the fridge and grab it. Anything that really makes us happy. Anything that makes us feel delighted. And Allah said, with some, your life will not be all this. But once in a while you will be tested, if not by fear, by loss of life, loss of wealth, you know, starvation, loss of this. However, we go back again to patience. Are we patient? Give good news, Muhammad. And anybody who carries the message of Muhammad, which is the message of patience and mercy. Allah, his name is As-Sabur, who is really very patient with our imbecilities and ungratefulness, ingratitude, and, and, and all kinds of silliness that we do. And the corruption we've caused to the creation of Allah and the animals we have abused. Huh? And the environment that we have destroyed and the land that we have corrupted and the seas. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون Allah says in the Quran and there will be a time corruption will be rampant on earth and in the sea. Why? Because of what the hands of people have done. We corrupted, we ruined the oceans, we have destroyed the corals, we have destroyed everything in nature, we, we messed up nature. He said, in the land and the sea. Why? Because what your hands, what the hands of mankind, humanity have done. لِيُذِيقَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا To taste them some of their bad Deeds, the poisoning of their mother, Mother Earth. Maybe they'll come back. So there is that, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ So it's not the end of the world. Please, brothers and sisters, according to our religion, it's not. Maybe we're nearing to it, but still a lot of good is going to happen. A lot. And a lot of prophecies have not been fulfilled. So please, there is no end of the world. Only Allah knows the end of the world. There are still many prophecies. Yes, the world we know it will change. We don't know if this pandemic will change it. We don't know. But what we know, Allah is in control. 
وبشر give good news to those who are patient صابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إن لله وإن إله راجعون when afflicted when something befalls them مصيبة calamity disease plague all kinds of things what do they say truly to Allah we belong and truly to Him we will return I always say this statement here إن لله وإن إله راجعون which we repeat when someone dies or an earthquake or a tsunami or a anything including this plague what do they say truly to Allah we belong and truly to him we will return my brothers and sisters this last one is my philosophy and your philosophy as a Muslim and as a believer we don't belong to ourselves we belong to him that's why we are servants of Allah slaves and servants Abidullah wa ibadu servants Sir, slaves and servants of Allah so we have to admit that we belong to Allah money we have belongs to Allah Allah who will let this fi. Allah has given you this money and property to see how are you gonna be having how you are behaving and this is why this is very crucial to understand at this moment as we're trying to become patient. Let's repeat, Inna lillahi. Truly to Allah we belong and truly to Him we will return. With that, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with the understanding of the deen and the purpose of life. As we reflect, we ask Allah not to deprive us from the ability to be patient and to do salat. As far as Ramadan is concerned, we hope and pray. Maybe it'll be different this year. Maybe. We have the means of online will connect will pray taraweeh inshallah will explain how tonight in the halaqa how we're going to proceed but let's not rush things let's see how these two weeks go and how things move we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the understanding and the wisdom and i wish you all the best i have good news for you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control allah hears our prayers and allah will protect us and allah will bless us astaghfirullah ask allah forgiveness Inna huwa al rahim For truly he forgives what no humans can forgive. And he is the most understanding and the most merciful.